welcome to this Feeling Crafty video. Today I'm going to show you how to make this cute little box using the gift bag punch board from Stamping Up. And one of the hardest things about this box is actually remembering the correct name for the punch board. Um, let's see if I manage to get it right all through the video. <laughs> I somehow suspect I won't. Um, the box itself, when it's finished, measures, uh, let me see, 14 and a half centimetres by five and a half, well, between five and five and a half centimetres, um, and it's about seven centimetres tall. So it's ideal for popping a little gift in, um, uh, maybe some chocolates, or actually it's just the right size for three Nature Valley bars. Funny story, it won't bore you with it now, but suffice to say they're very well hidden when they're in here because the box closes very securely. You've got the two flaps that tuck in and then the one over, and obviously you could decorate the front of that. It would be gorgeous with some nice big embellishment on it, but I wanted to show you the basic box. Um, now the good news is if you just want to make the box and you don't want to decorate it at all, there's no cutting apart from with the punch board involved. Um, I will put the dimensions for the pattern paper um, below so you can see those if you want to copy it exactly. Um, the paper I've used is from the English Garden Pack and I love these little brush stroke bits. Um, so let's get started. You need a piece of A4 card, this is soft suede to go with my pattern paper. Um, and you need the gift bag punch board. So we're going to start as if we were making a gift bag, but then we're going to go a little bit different towards the end. So unlike where the board gives you the exact measurements, if you want to make one of the bags, we're just going to ignore that. But other than that, we're doing kind of the same. So we're going to line our card up with the start line. You can see it says start line. Um, there's also a little guide which we're going to use from then on and the first thing you do whenever you put this in is you punch and you score horizontally so it's important to make sure the card's always at the back Whoops! and then we need to not move the card just yet and we're going to assume we, or use the lines we'd use to make a small gift bag so we're just going to come into the groove and pull our score tool down you can see it's left to hopefully you can see the line there then what we're going to do is move along and put our little marker for the start line in that groove. We're going to punch, we're going to score horizontally. Now, same as making a bag, we've done a front, so now we need a side. So we're just going to come into the groove here, pull the score tool down, but unlike a bag where you'd want the sides to kind of pinch in, we don't want to do that, so we're not going to score around the triangle or up the middle of it. We're just going to move along, line that up, punch down, score horizontally. Now we've done a front, a side, so we need another front, so we go back to the small line and we score down. Now you may be able to see yeah, that I'm not going right to the end, that's because the board doesn't come quite that way, but that doesn't matter, you'll see why in a moment. Then we're going to move along to another one, so we punch down, score horizontally. We've done a front, a side, a back, and we need another side, so we're just going to come along there, and then we're going to punch down and score horizontally. Okay, then what we're going to do, and this is where we start doing things a bit differently to making a bag, we're going to turn our card over and we're going to line it back up with the start line. Or oh, sorry, we're going to line it back up with that first line. We don't need to do the start line this side. You'll see why I've left that one separate to remind me which way around the box is. Line it in, press down, score horizontally, Whoops. try not to go off the edge, line up with the next line, you see we don't have to do any vertical lines this time because they're all done, score horizontally, line it up, punch it, score horizontally, line it up, punch it, score horizontally, and then one last time, you see we've got a rounded corner this end, so we need a rounded corner that end, so pop it back to the, whoops, get it straight to the start line on that side, and just punch down. Okay, now we're nearly there, we've just got a couple more bits to do. And the first thing we need to do is, this is going, the end where we haven't rounded our corners, this is going to be 
the flap of our box that comes round. So what we need to do is we need to cut off these two um, flaps. So I'm going to cut just inside the score line. Or actually, I forgot to score that line, so I'm going to have to guess. There we go. You can see it nice and easily. There we go. And then we just need to, to make it look neat, we're just going to round those corners as well. And we're going to do that by lining up to the start line, same as we did at the end. There we go. We're just going to punch. We've got nothing to score, obviously. And the easiest way to get it the other side is just to turn it over. Oops. Make sure it doesn't wander off before you punch it. Best to hold it in place. There we go. Come on, Becca, this is easy. There we go. And there we have our box ready to go. And all our little punched out bits will be in one place, ready to go in the bin. I'm not really throwing them on the floor, honestly. That is where my bin is. So you can see we've got our, what's going to be, the front of our box, the back of our box, at the bottom of our box, the back of our box, the top of our box and our flap. And if you're adding pattern paper, this is the time to do it. I just want to very quickly show you how easily the box comes together. So I'm just going to fold all the lines. So that's all that way. Then this way. A bit squeaky. There we go. And then I'm going to reach for my magic tear tape. If you've not used this stuff yet, get some. It's awesome for projects like this. So this is what our finished box, or well, this is how our box goes together. So we're going to take those two, pop them on the inside. So when those are lent over, those are going to need a little bit of tape. So we're just going to Remove the remnants of the last project. Pop a little bit of tape there and you just press it down and tear. That's how easy to use it is. Pop it down and tear. And then these are going to fold in like that and like that. And these are going to fold in like that and like that. Now I like to do the backs of my boxes first. So I'm going to my tape on this side here. Oops, because then it'll be in the right place. And when my box comes together, oops, ah, fingers and thumbs, it'll go together like that and then that'll be on there. And so let me show you one side put together. I'm going to rush this a little bit because we've got the video, but no need to rush it. Um, I'm also not sure how best to show you. There we go, and I'm going to stick that down like that. This one down like that. Keep those out of the way. Or tuck them in, whichever you find easiest. Tucking them in can give you the square to work from. There we go. Ooh, there we don't go, that's what we need. So we're just going to give that a bit of a pinch because once it's made contact, that'll be nice and secure and you can see how the box goes together. So here's the other end. Take the tape off. Lifts off nice and easily. Eesh. Prove how fingers and thumbs you are. And yes, I was using red ink earlier. That's what you can see on my hands. And then put the other side. Like that, and there we have our box ready to go. Or, if you've put your paper on it, this is what it looks like.